Hi everyone. Um, this video is not going to be useful um, talking about ostomies or stomas or output or anything like that. Um, this video is um, talking more about the emotional aspect of having IBD, IBS, a chronic illness of any sort, um, surgery, that kind of thing. Um, I've been a little bit down today. I went out for coffee. <laughs> it's my second outing since surgery um, because I'm actually feeling well enough. Um, so um, I just went to Starbucks, did some homework that from last semester that I still need to do. Um, school starts on Tuesday, which I can't believe. So I wanted to have a trial run, go out in public, try and hide my bag with some nicer clothes than I've been wearing. Um, find a way to hide the drain and we were sitting and I was kind of eavesdropping and a group of high school students was just you know talking about what high school students talk about they were talking about people and places and football and all this stuff and I found myself becoming like really upset and jealous because you know I wish that those were the only things on my mind like I wish that I had the liberty to not always worry about my health, my pain, my, you know, dehydration, like all this kind of stuff. I just, I want to be worry free like they were, like I was in high school. Um, I just really was upset. I, I just got really upset. And, you know, I think that a big thing having a chronic illness, everyone's like, oh, you're so strong. You, really I look up to you so much you're inspirational and yes you are you're strong you're inspirational you are handling things that other people you know may never know the pain that you go through and I just want to let you know that it's okay to cry and be upset and be scared sometimes too you know allow yourself those times to be upset and cry and scream and shout and you know, get it out because it's not healthy to always be strong, always be smiling, always be happy-go-lucky. I understand wanting to shield your family and friends from knowing how much pain and um, how scared you are, but sometimes you have to give yourself the liberty to be scared. Um, I've found a few tactics over the past two and a half years since I was diagnosed that kind of helped me deal with having a chronic illness, I guess I don't technically have it anymore, um, <laughs> that have helped me through surgery and everything like that too. Um, one is just finding a passion, finding something that you can completely throw yourself into, a distraction, something that you think is worthwhile. Um, for me, my distraction were books, 1984, and um, recently I just finished The Hunger Games super fantastic if you're looking for a book that'll suck you in. Um, for passion, I joined, I helped found and joined a group called T, which is Teach, Educate, Advocate, and we raised money to build a school for girls in Pakistan. Um, and that was so worthwhile to me and it just allowed me to throw myself into it, like really be passionate about it, really just completely get my mind off of everything that was wrong with my life and help other people whose lives are equally as, in, as challenging in different ways. Um, another way is humor. Um, IBD is not pretty by any means. Um, it's hard to feel pretty when you know on a day-to-day -day basis what you and your body are going through. Um, so, you know, I joke about it. My friends would tease me about having a pooping disease. I would, you know, every excuse it was I have a disease you know it was making fun and being okay at laughing how at how gross I thought I was sometimes and you know just being able to laugh about the kind of you know pooping is funny sometimes it's okay um and you know I was like oh how am I gonna make light out of this um situation where I'm getting my colon out I'm gonna be pooping in a bag like that's kind of gross I don't I'm 20 years old I don't want to be doing that um so I found some things and I'm really excited for the third thing that's coming. So the first thing that I wanted, and I took this with me to the hospital, I had it next to me my entire time. I was in there both times. Um, this is Colin 
and he is a small intestine, a colon, and an appendix. This is actually Andy, the appendix. Um, so even though I don't have a colon, I always will have a colon. Um, and also when you have to have the pillow driving, I put Colin in between me and the seatbelt because my colon goes everywhere with me. Um, and secondly, this is really cool. Hollister gives these out. Um, I don't know if you have to ask for them or not. I have a friend who works there, but um, this is a shadow buddy. And if you look at her, she actually has a little stoma and you put the bag on her. Um, just little things that kind of make light out of the situation because it can be scary, it can be upsetting, but just little things to make light out of it. Um, my third thing that I want to order from Amazon is actually a coffee cup that is a toilet seat. So you put your coffee in it and you drink out of the toilet seat. It's really cute. Um, so just little ways to find like light out of it, you know, embrace how gross you are sometimes. Um, I guess just this video is basically kind of venting for me. It's therapeutic for me, but I hope it's helped you too. Just it's okay to not be completely okay all the time. Give yourself the permission to be sad. Give yourself the permission to, you know, it's not fair. What you are going through, it's not fair. No one should have to go through it, but, you know, you're stronger because of it. It's okay to give yourself permission to be upset. But then you need to pull yourself out, get over it, get out, find a passion, have fun, you know, make light out of the situation because if you can't change your situation, change your attitude, that kind of thing. So, I hope this has been helpful. If not, sorry I wasted seven minutes of your time. Um, stay tuned for more videos. Bye.